and it is Monday, October 20th. It is farm to school week, so here we are at St. Michael's School today, getting set up for farm to school week. Uh, I've got the demonstration farm set up here. What we're going to talk about today is no-till versus conventional till, the benefits and the disadvantages of each. Uh, I've got my no-till drill up here, to, so at least they can see a tractor and touch a tractor. And then after that, uh, back by popular demand, the scarecrow making. So the school has a thrift shop over here, and we contacted the people that run, the volunteers that run the thrift shop a couple of weeks ago and said, hey, we're going to need some clothes to do scarecrows. So they've donated a bunch of clothes here some hats so what we're doing now is just tying the bottoms off on the pants and the shirts uh, i'll break a couple bales of straw open so they can uh, stuff everything make a scarecrow then what i found uh, last year that worked pretty good is to get these things to stand up i can take this tobacco stick and shove down in them uh, the pants and the shirt and they stand up pretty well we use zip ties to hold it all together Crude, but it works. I'm starting with the smartest class first, I guess. I'm not the smartest class. You're not. Why not? She makes it down. Oh. <laughs> well, I can already see we're not dealing with the smartest here. He can't tie his shoes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, are y'all the only ones coming out this go round? We're the seventh inning. Huh? I can't tell. We're the seventh inning. Okay, okay. Uh, do you need me to show you how to do that, sir? I know how to do it. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do a, something a little different this year than what I've done in years past because I think y'all are smart enough. You already know. Uh, the different products made from corn and soybeans and wheat like I've showed you in the past. So we're going to do a little different route bif here. Uh, so how many of you here plant a garden? Okay. So what... What's that? Okay. So what's the first thing you do before you plant a garden? Yes. You till it. Exactly. Exactly. And then after you till it, you're going to put the seeds in and hope something grows out of it, right? And so what what happens after you till it and plant it and then it rains on top of it? It soaks back the soil, it grows back. It grows back, yep. It yep, the soil soaks up the water. Yep. Anything else happen with it? Well, sometimes if you don't have good dirt, it's gonna go together just as hard as this uh, blacktop here. So that's why we as farmers have something that we do called no-till planting, where we don't even go up, go in and plow or till the soil. So this is the first example of that. You see all of this stuff on top of the soil. So this is what your garden would look like now or next spring, all of this stuff on top of the soil. What we do is we just go in with a no-till planter and just till right into that. And that's what this planter here is. You see these cultures, what we call cultures. They just cut a slot about one inch wide and that's the only dirt that they disturb. And then the back uh, unit drops the seed in the ground. So that's what we're doing here. We're just going through with a no-till planter. We're cutting a little slot in the ground, dropping the seed. And then, you know, the corn is going to come up and grow through that. And what happens is after continuous no-till, you start building up that organic matter, matter in the soil, that kind of like a compost in the soil. So what would be one of the advantages to doing, to planting this way versus planting this way? Uh, yes, you have an answer yet. Yeah, what, what, what would be an advantage? Why would this be better than this? Well, a little bit, maybe. Let's hear your answer. Probably because all the um, other dead areas of plants um, it'll help collect the water so the water's not as muddy and that makes it easier to plant. 
Exactly. That's one one advantage. Another advantage. Uh, let's go to you. It's like easier to drive on because it's not like really easier to drive on. Yep. You. So that the plants go like deeper in the soil and they're not just on the soil and then they don't just get crushed in the soil. By okay. The Okay, so you're leading on to something and what I'm trying to get at in that this type of soil promotes earthworm growth. So if you don't till the soil up, you will get lots of earthworms in here working that soil and those earthworms will make those holes for the water, for the roots to go down and then for the roots of the corn to find the nutrients in the water. And so it also builds up what we call organic matter. So if, if you continue tilling the soil each year like this, you're going to kill those earthworms every year because you're tilling that soil up. The earthworms don't have anything to feed on versus over here. If you don't till that soil up, the earthworms can stay there and continue living and growing and repopulating. And it just makes this a whole lot nicer soil to plant in versus this over here. Another advantage, imagine if this was on a little bit of a hill. So let's say we had a little bit of a hill that this whole field was on and it rained a lot. What's going to happen to this ground? Um, then that is going to get really muddy and it's going to get extra slippery probably and it's going to be really hard to drive on. And um, it could probably start here. Erosion, exactly. That's what I was after, erosion. So do you think this would wash away if it was on a hill and we got a lot of rain? Yeah. No. No, because there's not a lot of soil there showing. It's a lot of the trash and the organic matter showing. So that's another advantage because we're so close to the water with the bays and the rivers and the creeks, we don't want this stuff to wash into the, into the rivers and the bays. So this here is going to wash away very easily because you have all of that loose, fine dirt. To prepare this soil, we're going to have to go out with a tractor and a disc and we're going to have to till over this soil two or three times to get it worked up. And what is that going to do? We're going to burn a whole lot of diesel fuel with our tractors. We're going to spend a lot of time versus here. One time we go through it and we're planting it. Here we're going to go through it two or three times and then we got to come back and plant it. And then here in the middle is what we call a minimum tillage where we only go over it one time to work the soil up and, but we still leave some of this organic matter on top of there. And another advantage to this is the chemical usage. So on this we're only going to use probably one chemical to spray. We're going to have to come in and spray after we plant the crop. We're going to spray to kill all of this grass that's here. Over here, we're going to have to put down a chemical first before we plant to prevent any grass from coming up. And then we're going to have to come back after the crop comes up and spray it again. So a lot of advantages to doing no-till versus what we call conventional till. And then the one in the middle called uh, uh, minimum till. Because in your gardens, what do you spend all summer doing? Weeding. Weeding, yes. Weeding. And so you have less weeds this way to uh, deal with. And also when it's the uh, way where more corn is going on the other side, yeah. where there's lots of weed stuff, that'll also keep the weeds down. It'll be harder. That's right. It's, uh, it's kind of like a mulch that keeps those, helps keep uh, those weeds down. Very good. Does everybody know what this is? Did, I'm sure they were. No, they can do about 25 miles an hour. They were doing like 5 miles an hour. Yes. Are you going to kill another scarecrow this year? No, I'm not. Okay. I'm not. You're welcome. You're welcome. I. We killed a scarecrow last year. Remember, you see, it tied us. We had to see it do a 360 to the scarecrow, and then it got stuck, and it was like. When I turned the tractor on, we had a scarecrow behind the tractor, and I turned the tractor on, and the scarecrow got stuck in it. You don't remember that? I think a little bit. Right? Okay. Okay. There's a video on YouTube that you can go find because I posted the video on YouTube of that. You can go back and watch it.
Yes, I knew someone that got caught, and that's why I was doing that demonstration to teach y'all how to be safe. Yes. So do you know what the attachment is? Uh, the attachment on this combine is for? What this attachment is for? Uh, I forgot. Uh, uh, how about you? Do you know what this attachment would be for on the combine? Is it for the plants? Yes. Which plants? Which plant? You. Oh, nope. Nope. Is it? You. Uh, corn socks. Nope. Wait, is nope. It wheat? Yes, wheat. And how about another one? I have it sitting up here. Oh, soybeans? Soybeans, yes. So this attachment is for cutting wheat and soybeans, but then we can put this attachment on for corn because corn is a little different plant. So we have two different attachments. And yes, it will pull it down through there and just save the ear of corn here. And then the soybeans are here. Uh, these aren't quite ready to harvest. These are ready to harvest. And you can see what happens with soybeans when they start to dry out. Each time they get wet and dry out again, they start opening up and curling and the soybeans just pop right out. See, the soybeans are still in there, but these have gotten too dry. And so the soybeans are gonna pop right out, fall on the ground, and they should have been harvested last week. Any questions about that? Nope, y'all are smart on that now. Do y'all want to make a scarecrow? Yeah, okay. Uh, let's see, we can do probably one for the boys and one for the girls. Let's see who can do the better job here. Unfortunately, I had two groups where my sound was not working for some reason, so we don't have sound for these two groups. It was a bit chilly on this morning, and you're going to see my daughter here give her jacket to one of the kids because they were a little bit uh, chilly. Uh, this group right here, I believe this is the kindergarten and uh, pre-K group, they were very inquisitive. They had some good answers. I was very impressed with them. Uh, they were well behaved. You have to get down to their level here. You know, stoop down, uh, get on their level and talk to them and they'll listen to you. You can pick your pants. Pick your pants and your shirts. We have hats this year. And then over here are the pillowcases with the markers that you can draw your face on uh, for the heads. And we have the hats as well. Here's the straw. Uh, no, the boys are going to do one and the girls are going to do one. Now, start shoving all the way down to each leg. Yes, somebody's got to hold them and then the other person shove. <laughs> a fashion icon. And what is the name of this one? What's the name? I don't know. 
All right, come on, girls. You don't know. Stand next to your scarecrow. Sarah. Sarah. What was the name of the scarecrow? John Wick. John Wick. Okay, there you go, John Wick. Are we having a marriage ceremony yeah. here? <laughs> and do we have names? That's Billy. Billy. No, it's Ezekiel. No, no, no. It's Ezekiel. It's Ezekiel. <laughs> and does this one have a name? Betty. Betty. Okay. Billy and Betty. Billy and Betty. All right. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, another clip without sound. I need to learn to use my camera. I'm just showing us cleaning up here. It's the end of the day here. I'm explaining uh, how we did these scarecrows. The best thing we found are these coveralls. They really work nice. We've got to ask for more of those coveralls next year because it holds everything together much nicer. On these without coveralls, we use zip ties to tie the Top of the body down to the pants, just cut a slit in the shirt and the pants, put some zip ties in there, and uh, that holds the bodies together. Then we put those tobacco sticks in, one down on each leg, and that helps hold it up there. And then uh, with the heads, we use pillowcases and just Sharpie markers to draw a face on. Same thing, use some zip ties to put those pillowcases on, uh, some zip ties to hold the hats on. We didn't do hats last year. Zip ties to tie the ends of the shirts and the pants together so it holds straw. Yep, very simple. Doesn't take a lot of effort. Okay, I'm uh, wrapping it up here. We've got the truck loaded up and I'm gonna say, see ya!